Okay, uh, one of the labs you're going to be doing is called the Atomic Spectra Lab, and really to understand that, you need to understand these three uh, level two objectives, what the ground state is, what the excited state is, and what an atomic spectra is, and where the atomic spectra comes from, or how does, it, how does one get created. All right, a little history here, some elements were actually discovered uh, by fi finding their atomic spectra. In fact, uh, the element helium was first discovered in looking at the sun back in the early 1800s through little devices like you used in earth science, those little black boxes that allowed you to see the spectrum. And you probably saw something like this when you were in ninth grade or eighth grade earth science uh, when you looked at those spectrum. We're going to try to explain that now from the point of atomic structure. So one way we could look at that is to go back and sort of use this Bohr-like idea of what an atom structure is. I'm just going to use hydrogen here with one proton and one electron with the various rings or energy levels of electron uh, positioning shown. And also I'm going to use a little analogy here of a ladder uh, showing an electron sitting here on the ground and then various uh, rungs on the ladder. Now, uh, if the electron is in the most uh, stable place it can be, or in other words, in its lowest possible energy location, uh, we would say that the electron is in the ground state. For the hydrogen atom, of course, since there's only one electron, uh, it would be in the first energy level, and we would say that that means the electron is in its ground state. Uh, similar over here, we could say that the electron is in the lowest place it can be. It's sitting on the ground. All right? Now, if the electron or, uh, or the atom were to absorb some energy, say some from a Bunsen burner or a flame or some source of electricity or something like that, we could, we could cause the electron to actually jump right out of the ground state or the normal place where it is up to a higher level. Now it won't end up in between levels. It'll either jump completely to another level or it won't even notice the energy at all. Uh, and so it has to be just the right amount of energy, sort of like when you're climbing a ladder, you would put your foot in between the rungs and expect to climb the ladder. You'd have to put your foot right on a rung. All right, similar idea there. So if the electron were actually going to climb the ladder, it would have to pop completely up to a higher rung. All right, now that would be saying now that the electron, having absorbed some energy, it's at a higher energy state than it would normally be, or in other words, it's in the excited state. Now, it doesn't stay there very long, because you guys know that being at a higher energy place is more unstable. So almost immediately, the electron goes, ah, I don't like being up here, boink, drops back down to where it came from. But to do that, it has to give off some energy. So in coming out uh, of this energy level and popping back to its ground state, it has to release some energy. That energy has to come out, and it will typically come out of the atom as some color of visible light and will result in one of the lines in the spectrum of that element. And every element has its own unique fingerprint or spectrum that it produces when it goes into the excited state. I've only shown one possible excitation or de-excitation now, but again the electron could pop completely from the first energy level, say all the way up to the fourth energy level. Now in this case it's going to have to give off a lot more energy when it uh, descends out of the uh, excited state and comes back down to the first energy level. Again, it's going to have to give off more energetic light, and that more energetic light would have a different colored spectrum line associated with it. Now, when you do the excitation, uh, it's like some of the electrons jump to one level, some jump to another, but in the end, we get this spectrum, and again, you've seen that and you will see that during the lab.